Welcome to the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel. I'm Justin and I like to build speakers. Today I'm going to show you my latest project, the Budget Bass Box. And the adventure starts right now. I searched the web high and low to find the cheapest 12 inch subwoofer that I could find. And here's what I found. This is the GRS Polycone 4 ohm 12 inch subwoofer. And you can get it on Parts Express right now for only $22.98. But if you buy four or more, they're only 20 bucks each. My expectations aren't terribly high. The power rating on this thing is only 125 watts. The X Max is only 8.5 millimeters. But for $23, what do you expect? We're gonna go with a very simple design. Parts Express recommends a 1.5 cubic foot sealed box. It'll have an F3 of 37 Hertz. No complicated plans here. I just did the math on my phone and wrote it down on the wood I'm actually using to build the project, which is just scrap wood that I happen to have laying around because this is the budget base box. Let's get to the table saw and get to cutting. But wait, I've gotta tell you something important. I made several huge mistakes when I was building this subwoofer. I'm sure you see some small mistakes. I should be using better materials. I should add bracing. I should put a coat of primer down before I paint it. But that's not the kind of mistake that I'm talking about. If you think you know where I'm going with this, go ahead and tell me about it in the comments and watch to the end so you can see where I goofed up. Okay, back to the build. My preferred method of box building is brad nails and wood glue. The nails hold the pieces together long enough for the glue to cure. The glue holds the box together and seals the edges. I like this method because brad nails are cheap. This is the budget base box. Cheap is what we're looking for. I'm going to clamp and glue the baffle. I've got something special planned for it, so keep watching. I'm going to let that glue dry for a few hours before I come back and pull the clamps off. Now you can use clamps if you want to. You don't have to use brad nails or wood screws. The screws and nails just hold things together long enough for the glue to dry. When the glue's dry, it's stronger than the wood. Usually, I make the speaker cut out before I mount the baffle. That way, if I botch the cutout, I can just make another baffle and start over. I did it differently this time for absolutely no good reason. Do you cut the speaker hole out before or after you attach the baffle? Tell me about it down in the comments. I'm using a Jasper circle jig and a spiral cut bit. If you need any of these tools, you can check the affiliate links in the description. To make sure everything is smooth, I'm gonna flush trim the sides with a spiral cut flush trim bit. And then I'm gonna follow that with a round over bit. I'm gonna round over every edge except for the baffle and that's gonna make sense here in a minute. The baffle is made out of two layers of half inch birch veneered plywood. I'm gonna mask off the baffle and start working on the rest of the box. The plywood on the rest of the box is ugly. I've gotta do something about that. I've got some big scrapes and gaps, so I'm gonna mix up some Bondo and fill those in. After it's dry, I'm gonna sand everything flat. I'm gonna follow that Bondo with some glazing putty. And then I'm gonna knock that down with some sandpaper. When I'm done, everything gets a good stain with 220 grit sandpaper. Now I'm gonna grab some flat black spray paint. Gluing down carpet on the box is expensive. Remember, this is the budget base box. After the first coat, the grain in the plywood is still visible. It needs a few more coats. It took almost two cans, but I was eventually able to hide about 95% of the plywood grain. Now let's pull up the masking tape so you can get an idea of what I'm trying to do. The plan is to stain the baffle to get a nice contrast between the baffle and the rest of the box. If you've seen any of my older videos, you've noticed that I've done that before. At this point, I would call it my signature look. I do something very similar in my passive radiator build. I'll give you a link up here. In that build, I brad nailed the baffles and it left some ugly nail holes. Lesson learned. That's why I clamped and glued the baffle earlier. Off camera, I applied a layer of Minwax Poly Shades. This is a stain and poly all in one. I let that dry overnight, and now I'm gonna hit it with some really fine steel wool to sand it down to a glass-like finish. How about a terminal cup? Let's bust out the hole saw. I 
I got this terminal cut from Parts Express. They were like a buck 75 for a pair and they look absolutely amazing against that flat black paint. I'm going to use some solder and shrink wrap on the connections. Same goes for the speaker terminals. Just because it's a budget base box doesn't mean I'm going to do a bad job of this thing. I had some polyfill laying around. I threw that in there to kill some of those standing waves that are so often present in subwoofer enclosures. I wrapped some Tessa tape around the speaker wire to make sure it doesn't bang against the side of the box when I'm bumping my tunes. Next, we install the speaker. I always pre-drill my holes. It's really handy to have two drills so you don't waste time changing bits. Before we test bump, we have some unfinished business. Did you catch my mistakes? Remember the title of the video? This is the Budget Bass Box. Let's rewind. I cut the plywood on a table saw. That's a $300 tool. I used two routers, three different router bits plus a circle jig. That's easy 250 bucks worth of gear. I sanded it with a cheap palm sander. That's probably a $30 tool. I used a bunch of clamps. I have no idea what I paid for them. Remember those cheap brad nails? They don't work without compressed air. The compressor was 100 bucks. The Harbor Freight Brad Nailer was 30. I used a butane torch and two drills to connect and install the driver and the speaker terminal. That's another 200 bucks. Then I used a bunch of other stuff I had laying around. Heat shrink, stain, Tessa tape, brads, polyfill, masking tape. The list just keeps going. If you were interested in building a budget base box, you would not have this stuff on hand. That's exactly where I was about six years ago when I decided I wanted to get into audio and start building my own speakers. It's been a fun adventure, but it takes time to build your skills and your tools. Now we need to test bump this box. I can't play music for copyright reasons, but it sounds just fine. I got aggressive with the volume. It took its radiant power plus some extra with no trouble at all. It did not get very low, but it's not designed to. The F3 for the sealed design is 37 hertz. That means it's going to be down by three decibels at 37 hertz. Now it was not enough bass for me, but my wife was upstairs above the garage in the bonus room and she heard it just fine. It totally freaked the dog out and the kids could feel the bass at the far end of the house. For 23 bucks, you are not gonna beat it. If you wanna see my first ever sub box build that I put together with some really basic tools, click this video right here. Or you can hit the subscribe button and join me on my next adventure. 